Welcome back to Switch to Linux in the Business Edition of the Weekly News Roundup. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, interact with everybody, and see the kitty be fed at the end of the stream. He's like, dude, what are you doing? Anyway, uh, before we get started, I'll remind you that you can uh, head on over to shop.switchlinux.com if you want to pick up some Switch to Linux merch. We have fun things like the No Preserve Root, pres um, September 18 Code of Conduct on a variety of things, t-shirts, bags, coffee cups, all sorts of things. We also have cats and tinfoil hats on coffee mugs. I probably would not do the red one, um, but uh, we do have nice black options for cats and tinfoil hats as well. Uh, you can get those on bags, on coffee cups, things like that. Just a variety of different Switch to Linux things, including sub to the cat because the human is crazy. So you can check those out at shop.switchtolinux.com. All right, now on to the business news. So, of course, I do have an affiliate link. If you head on over to my affiliates page, you will still find the NordVPN affiliate link there. Um, I have not been pushing it as much lately just because to get your actual affiliate payout from them is a royal pain, and it took me three weeks last time. And uh, I find that a little annoying. Uh, but, you know, just to say, let you know, I do have an affiliate link for them. I still have it. You can still use it. Um, but hackers did steal some secret crypto keys from NordVPN. Now, some people are making a bigger deal of this than I think it really is. Um, what happened? Now, the biggest thing, I think, is that they did not disclose it as quickly as they should have. They really should. However, when something happens, you do need to make sure that nothing else is vulnerable before the whole world knows about it. So nobody else goes out and starts looking for stuff as well. But what happened is NordVPN has servers all around the world where you can access it. And if you've ever run a VPN server, you know, it's you're running a, a VPN network. You have to have a separate install for each one of these, and each one of these is going to have its own separate keys. Well, what happened is they were contracting out one of these servers, which I believe was in... Um, was somewhere in uh, Europe -y area and uh, not Switzerland. I don't think it was Sweden. Maybe it was Finland. I forget. But anyway, they had a um, they had a server out there that was being contracted out. And what happened is the people who were running that server uh, for them installed an insecure patch without letting NordVPN know about it. This insecure patch allowed the uh, it allowed the hackers to get in there and grab the encryption keys for that server. Uh, Finland, thank you. Um, it was uh, they grabbed the encryption keys for the server, which would allow them to basically perform, if they wanted to, a man in the middle attack, not to anybody using NordVPN, but anybody using NordVPN going specifically to that one server. Now, Nord does not keep logs of the user data, allegedly, and nobody's been able to demonstrate that they do. Now, one of the pieces of the article said, oh, here's a log of the commands under attack, and so people are like, oh my god, they use logs. Um, no, this was a log of the attackers that the attackers were using. This is not a log of the servers. Now, just because they say there's no user data, that does not mean their servers don't have logs at all. It just, you know, there's error logs, there's other logs that are going on. They can also run a cron job to kill the logs every hour or whatever they want to do, every minute if they want to. So they have all these things. Ubuntu does a similar thing where they have a cron job that will clear the IP addresses that ping in with the system's data when you install Ubuntu. Similar type of approach. But accordingly or allegedly, Nord does not save any user data so there's no logs to be gotten no passwords were gotten the only thing that was obtained here is the encryption keys for one of their many servers so i don't think that this is nearly as big a deal as some people have made it out to be just to be aware you know it is possible even if you're on a vpn it does not mean that everything that you're doing is completely and perfectly secure just something to keep in mind and this was caused because a third party that uh, that they were using to maintain a server installed a patch they were not supposed to. That's kind of how that happened. Um, that's kind of my take. This isn't enough for me that I would be seriously concerned. But at the same time, uh, the biggest concern is that they didn't disclose this for a long time. And that, I think, is the biggest 
the biggest concern. You want to get on top of these things, not wait until somebody else leaks. Other news, of course, uh, Apple banned that one Hong Kong app that was helping the protesters because, you know, you know, all these whatever, you know, this was being used to harm police officers or whatever. Um, not, not only a week or two later, Tim Cook is now elected the chairman of a Chinese business school. Uh, conflict of interest much? I don't know. I'm not necessarily going to make uh, issues one way or the other. Like, you know, I'm not going to say he's a Chinese asset, but I think Tim Cook might be a Chinese asset. I mean, really? Um... I don't know. I don't know what to think about this, but he takes a, a position on the board for three years. This makes me wonder, like Huawei is present is prevented. Now governments talk about taking down TikTok. Basically anything comes out of China. It's like covered in cooties or something. The Chinese cooties are coming for us all people. The Chinese cooties. Um, now Tim Cook is now taking the chairman of a Chinese business school. Um, which does make it seriously look like the apps that were taken down from the app store. It does make it look like some type of buy-off or some type of issue here. So this is not a good public image for Apple or for Tim Cook. Uh, so for whatever that might be worth. <clears throat> and uh, in, in full disclosure, I don't play Blizzard games. So Blizzard, you can hate me all you want for speaking out in solidarity of Hong Kong if you want, you know. All right. Um, yeah, so Pizza Hut is testing out a new plant-based meat topping called Incognito. In a patented round box, which actually this, this patented round box is actually created for Apple, by the way. Um, Copertina with their little round building and stuff. So, okay, here, here's, here's the things I think about this. Number one, the name of this is the coolest name I've ever heard for, for some meat, meat item. You know, incognito. The, whoever named this thing needs a Nobel Prize for the best marketing name in the history of the universe. Absolutely. Am I a customer? No. If you want to do away with meat, if you want to tell us, stop eating your cows, you want to say, go vegan, go vegan, stop imitating my meat. For the love, people, stop imitating my meat. Oh, my Lord. Guys, I was in the grocery store the other day. I'm looking at the bouillon cubes, like, you know, chicken broth and beef broth. Oh, see what I found? Vegan chicken broth. Vegan chicken broth. Oh, my Lord. Vegan chicken broth. Here's a hint, people. If you do not want to eat meat, stop imitating meat. <laughs> if you want meat, Lord, people, just eat some meat. Just eat some meat. Oh, no, no, me, it's bad. It's bad for the planet, bad for the body, bad for the soul, bad for everything, bad for the karma against all of the soul animals. We're going to come back in their second life and kill us. You don't want to eat meat? Here's a tip. Stop imitating our food. Whether you want the Impossible Whopper or Incognito, you want to sit here like, ah, oh, the meat's so bad for us. Stop imitating our food. Y'all are vegan. Y'all are vegetarian. Go eat your vegan, vegetarian plants and beans. Leave my meat alone. Leave my meat alone. Those are my thoughts about incognito. Best name in the history of the universe. Now, Pizza Hut's only going to be selling this at one store for one day. Um, anybody that's down there from, uh, I think it's in Phoenix or Flags. It's somewhere in Arizona. One day you can get this uh, let us know how it is. Um, is is the incognito get you fooled or not? Uh, let me know your thoughts. I think, hey, y'all don't want to have our meat in society, then stop imitating our meat. We don't need chemical concoctions of things that are perfectly healthy. All right. Uh, <laughs> We talked about Comcast free streaming box. Well, it turns out that Comcast free streaming box actually requires you to pay $13 a month fee because as of right now, it has to be, you have to use their modem rentals, which last time they keep on trying to charge me for this modem rental fee of theirs. I thought it was only $10. Did they raise that price on everybody all of a sudden? I mean, that's a 30% price increase. Let me know. Um, but to in order to use this free streaming box to watch all of your streaming stuff, if you're just an internet provider, you have to use their modem for a $13 a month fee. Now, they said they're going to drop that requirement, but after quite a long time, then at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, they've not taken it down. So my prediction is, Nah, they probably will never let you use this on your own, uh, your own modem, your own router, but I don't know. Uh, so 
Yeah, Comcast's free streaming box actually requires you to purchase uh, or rent, rather, their modem. Why bother purchasing? Renting, they just have you uh, grabbed for life, which is insanity. All right, and on to our final story. A man sues AT&T after fraudulent SIM swap left uh, led to a $1.8 million cryptocurrency theft. I got to say that the guy here is a little bit of stupid. He did actually put his entire life savings into cryptocurrency. Not cool, dude. Not cool. But that being said, this is an interesting story because it really once again highlights the thing I've said on the show time and time again. This was all perpetrated by AT&T employees. So what ended up happening is some hackers got in there and they just kind of like, hey, we need into this thing. And they were trying to do some social engineering stuff. And eventually they just paid off the employees. So they went in and said, hey, this is the number that we want. So the employee went in and provided hackers access to the account by swapping the SIM. So they swapped the SIM card to the phone. And then when the hackers had access to the phone, because the AT&T employees gave them the access that they wanted to, they were able to get into all of the accounts and stole more than $1.8 million. Now, the man who had his money stolen from him is going back and, you know, the hackers, you're probably not going to be able to sue them, but he was apparently able to demonstrate that it was AT&T employees were paid off in order to help this heist go. So, you know what? Y'all are all co-conspirators. I can't, can't figure out who the hackers are, so I'm just going for the AT&T company. My prediction is this guy's going to get, if, if this doesn't go to court, AT&T is really going to, they're going to pay him off. They're probably going to pay him the poll $1.8 million, and they're going to give him a little bit more so that he signs a non-disclosure. That's my prediction of what's going to go on here because this is very blatant employee abuse of their systems. And this, just a reminder, when we have these systems that an employee has access to, okay, when we have these systems the employees have access to, okay, what can end up happening here is that the employees could access all of these things and we don't even think about that. We're too busy thinking about, is the security good? Are the hackers good? But somebody at that company has access to that information outside of the very rare case that everything is encrypted on your device and then sent to them in an encrypted form. So those are kind of the thoughts here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.